Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutor's feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. Telling people to change unhealthy behaviors doesn't work. Otherwise, we would all already be slim, fit, non-smokers. Whether it's habit, the temptation of an ad or just the easiest option, we often rely on automatic behaviors to get us through the day. And even though we know taking the elevator, grabbing a beer or drowning a salad in ranch dressing are not the healthiest choices, we keep making them unless those bad choices become too inconvenient. Making bad choices harder is actually the best way to help people get healthier, argues a new essay in the journal Science. Simply programming elevator doors to close really slowly actually motivates more people to climb stairs. Limiting the places that sell tobacco cuts overall consumption. Little changes like these reach everyone not just the people targeted with a health message. And they get us healthier just by letting us stay on autopilot. Cost of our serious illnesses and deaths in the U.S. now come from preventable diseases, such as heart disease. But, we know what works to improve health. To arrive at their recommendations, researchers reviewed more than a thousand studies of public health. Their findings are in the American Heart Association journal Circulation. Some of the suggestions, such as tightening restrictions on smoking, are already paying off in many areas. Others such as increasing taxes for unhealthful foods, might face stiff opposition, but could pay off large dividends in health savings later. But some surprisingly simple suggestions could be easiest to institute. Try extending the hours for public parks and schools recreation facilities or improving sidewalks and visual appeal of neighborhoods to make people want to walk, bike or run there more often. You've probably noticed you're more likely to catch a cold if you pull a lot of all-nighters. But lack of sleep can also compromise your immune system's response to vaccines. And in some cases, make the shots useless. So says a study in the journal Sleep. Researchers gave 125 healthy, middle-aged men and women the hepatitis B vaccine a three-part vaccine given at one, two and six months. And during that time, volunteers tracked their sleep habits. Six months after the final booster, researchers took blood samples to see if the patients had rallied sufficient numbers of antibodies against Hep B. 
18 patients had not the vaccine had failed. Turns out the vaccine was almost 12 times as likely to fail in volunteers who regularly slept fewer than 6 hours a night compared to those who snoozed more than 7. In electronics there's an understanding that silicon and other elements are responsible for bringing our gadgets to life, while plastic serves as the supporting structure. But what if that plastic could be both the brains and the brawn? Better yet, what if plastic was pliable enough to form all sorts of wearable electronics and even implantable medical devices? In fact, electronics made from conductive plastic have been in the works for at least a decade, one of the difficulties has been overcoming a loss of conductivity when plastic electronics are stretched too far. A team of researchers from the US, South Korea and China say, they have found a way to keep an electrical connection, even after stretching their specially made plastic more than four times its normal size. It's a dirty job, but two NASA spacecraft are ready to do it. On August 23, NASA plans to launch two spacecraft into the radiation belts around Earth. The twin radiation belt storm probes will investigate high-energy particles held in place by Earth's magnetic field. Those fast-moving protons and electrons form two bands known as the Van Allen radiation belts, after physicist James Van Allen, who discovered them in 1958. The two NASA probes will study how the belts formed, and what makes them swell up from time to time. The outer radiation belt in particular can change quickly in response to the sun's outbursts of charged particles, also known as solar storms. The spacecraft will fly through the belts for two years, measuring charged particles, plasma waves and magnetic fields in Earth's vicinity. NASA hopes that the mission will help illuminate the complex physics of the stormy near-Earth environment perhaps, help future spacecraft weather that storm. Birds face many man-made mortal threats, windows, cats, habitat destruction, even climate change. And now, there's poison in their bird seed. You see the Scots Miracle Grow Company had been in the habit of applying banned pesticides to its wild bird food products. In particular, the company applied a chemical known as Stercide 2 to its bird food despite a warning label for that product that reads, Stercide 2 is extremely toxic to fish and toxic to birds and other wildlife. Why add a compound toxic to birds to food meant to be eaten by birds? Because Scott didn't want bugs infesting its bird food during storage. By the time Scott stopped adding the pesticide in March 2008, the company had sold some 70 million bags of adulterated bird food. The company also submitted false documents to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, distributed pesticides with misleading labels and distributed illegal pesticides. The Chukchi Sea lies between Alaska and Russia just north of the Bering Strait. Shell Oil hopes to begin drilling in these Arctic waters in the next few days if the U.S. government grants permission. 
the ship Noble Discoverer will drill two exploratory wells to determine what, if any, hydrocarbons are beneath the seabed and how well drilling equipment can withstand the rigors of the far north. Those rigors include everything from swirling currents and floating ice chunks to migrating whales. There's coral their scientists sent to the region by Greenpeace have found sea raspberry, a soft, deep sea species. Other such deep sea corals bore the brunt of BP's catastrophic blowout in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. It remains to be seen whether offshore drilling in the Arctic can be any safer than drilling in bombier waters. What we're bringing for our users is basically an immersive experience of a huge portion of the NASA Kennedy Space Center facility, Ryan Fowler, project manager of Google's Street View. In honor of the center's 50th anniversary, Street View is adding more than 6,000 images of the Space Center, the starting point for Apollo and Space Shuttle missions. So you can go into the facility, you can go into some of the large areas there, like the Vehicle Assembly Building, you can go down to the launch pad and actually go up several floors of the launch pad and see where the astronauts would walk and where they would go as they were boarding the shuttle. The shuttle is now a thing of the past. But someday Kennedy will host a new generation of spacecraft. When we were there we actually got to take a snapshot of these structures and these systems in place before all those transitions happened. Being physically active has numerous benefits. Now a study has looked closely at the effects of fitness in the midlife years for preventing debilitating chronic diseases later. The ongoing study gathered fitness stats for more than 18,000 adults and followed their health status into old age. Assessing 40 years of that data, the analysis finds that those who had higher fitness levels in their 30s, 40s and 50s were substantially less likely to have a chronic condition between the ages of 70 and 85. The findings are in the archives of internal medicine. Physical fitness seemed to stave off heart disease and heart failure, which might not be a big surprise. But it also reduced rates of diabetes, kidney disease and even Alzheimer's disease. Current recommendations suggest adults make time for at least 20 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity a day such as fast walking, jogging, biking or swimming. When you don't clean your plate, microbes feast. And Americans are awfully good at feeding microbes, wasting some 222 million metric tons of food a year. That's a quarter of our food. Much of that wasted food ends up in garbage dumps, turned by microbes into methane, a powerful greenhouse gas and one of the primary culprits behind global warming. Now government officials in Massachusetts would like to ensure that restaurants, universities, Hospitals and other large institutions don't exacerbate that problem. The idea is to make sure all that wasted food doesn't end up in landfills but instead becomes either compost or energy. The same microbes that turn food into methane in a landfill can turn food into methane in a biodigester, and that methane can then be used as a fuel. More importantly, from the Bay State's perspective, it will keep the state's landfills from filling up.
kids today may be more familiar with the sound of a rushing highway than a rushing river. But imagine that the internal combustion engine could be set aside and we could design the soundscape of our future. What oral environment would you choose for traffic? For the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the answer is that new cars should sound like old cars. Hybrid and electric vehicles can be so quiet that people outside the vehicle can't hear them. So these two quiet cars will be required to sound something like this. The Obama administration wants a million electric vehicles on the road by 2015. Slow sales of cars like the Chevy Volt and Tesla Model S may keep that number from being reached. But there are still hundreds of thousands of EVs and hybrids on the road today. It's hoped that the new rule will help prevent thousands of pedestrian and cyclist deaths. Medicinal tablets are nothing new. Doctors have been dispensing pills for thousands of years. And now archaeologists have turned up some of those ancient medicines, which were preserved in a shipwreck for close to two millennia. The second century Pizzino wreck was discovered in 1974 off the coast of Italy. Its cargo included medical equipment like a cupping vessel, iron probe, and tin boxes of supplies. And in one of those boxes, Researchers recovered five gray tablets. Now, they've analyzed the antique medication. The work is in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The pills primarily contained zinc compounds, probably the active medicinal ingredients. But researchers also detected starch, pollen, charcoal, fats and linen fibers. Those fibers helped the tablets hold their round, loaf-like shape, which may be the key to the medication's use. The Curiosity rover has achieved plenty of firsts in its six months on Mars. And the last first is especially noteworthy. On February 9th, Curiosity made the inaugural run of its drill, boring into a rock to extract a sample from the interior. It thus became the first robot ever to drill on Mars. Curiosity has now gotten some use from most of its science instruments, but not all of them are working. At a conference at UCLA, Deputy Project Scientist Ashwin Vasavada explained that problems are facing the rover's wind and humidity sensors. The humidity sensor is being calibrated. They think it's going to produce some good data. It's measuring a good signal. It's just the physical units don't quite make sense right now. Worse is the wind sensor. Damaged during the rover's landing. The wind sensor is actually six different sensors. We lost two of them during landing, and the other four are proving pretty hard to interpret as well. These two paintings, both called sunflowers, are generally accepted as the finest of several depictions of the thick-stemmed, nodding blooms that Van Gogh made in 1888 and 1889 during his time in Arles. The first is now in the collection of the National Gallery in London, and the second is in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Van Gogh referred to this work as a repetition of the London painting, but art historians and curators have long been curious to know how different this repetition is from the first. Should it be considered a copy, an independent artwork or something in between? An extensive research project conducted over the past three years by conservation experts at both the National Gallery and the Van Gogh Museum has concluded that the second painting was not intended as an exact copy of the original example.
sound and touch may seem completely separate, except possibly when playing the game Operation. But it turns out that the two senses are actually quite entwined. A new study finds that people with hearing issues often also have problems with touch. Researchers compared sets of twins, some identical and some fraternal. The identical twins, obviously, have the same genome and thus the same mutations. The fraternal twins have genetic differences. Other subjects in the study were congenitally deaf. To determine how acute their hearing was, the subjects reported whether they could hear various high frequencies. To evaluate touch they were asked to differentiate different surfaces with their fingertips. Have you ever wanted to turn down the volume at a deafening concert or noisy bar? Envy the whale. A new study finds that toothed whales can reduce their own auditory sensitivity when they expect a loud sound. The work is presented at this week's Acoustics 2012 meeting. Whales and dolphins rely on their responsive hearing to interpret returning echolocation clicks. Previous research suggested that these marine mammals could dull their hearing before uttering outgoing echolocation clicks, which are very loud. Could they use the same coping mechanism for external noises? To find out, researchers trained a false killer whale that a loud noise would always follow a brief warning signal. Then, they attached suction cup sensors to the outside of the whale's head and played the signal. The sensors measured brainwaves that indicated the whale did reduce its hearing sensitivity in expectation of a clamor. Jack Nicholson, playing the crazed caretaker in The Shining, makes me reach for a blanket. Now a study finds that people we find, well, creepy can actually make us feel colder. The research will be published in the journal Psychological Science. Researchers interviewed 40 college undergraduates. During each interaction, the experimenter was either chummy with the student or very stiff and professional. The investigator also alternated between mimicking students' posture a signal of rapport and not doing anything at all. Participants then completed a questionnaire designed to find out how hot or cold they felt. The results showed that the subjects actually felt colder when the investigator acted inappropriately or sent mixed signals. The researchers conjecture that because the brain tries to interpret social cues and purely physical ones simultaneously, People unconsciously associate icy stares and chilly interactions with actual physical coldness. Some ecotourism offers visitors close encounters with different species. But new research suggests that these activities may not be so great for the animals. Researchers tagged stingrays in Stingray City in the Cayman Islands to monitor their movements and behavior. Compared to stingrays outside of the tourism area, those in Stingray City switched their activity patterns from night to day, when tourists handed out food, and made it year round instead of seasonally. The stingrays also had more bite marks which suggests increased aggression towards one another. The study is in the journal PLOS One. Past research has found increased stress and more intra- and interspecies aggression among animals that have been fed by humans. Interactive tourism is a growing business.
In Italy, some of these cities were able to gain control of the surrounding country and to become city-states, resembling those of the ancient Greeks. Their autonomy was assisted by the continuing struggle between popes and emperors, between church and state, again, a thoroughly unique Western experience. In these states, the modern world began to take form. Although the people were mainly Christians, their life and outlook became increasingly secular. Here, and not only in Italy but in other cities north of the Alps, arose a worldview that celebrated the greatness and dignity of mankind, which was a very sharp turning away from the medieval Western tradition that put God and life in the hereafter at the center of everything. You might not know how many calories were in that sandwich, but if you got lunch at the Massachusetts General Hospital cafeteria, you could tell with one glance whether you'd made a healthful choice. Offerings are color-coded. Simply posting calories does not always get consumers to make healthier choices, so researchers tried something different. Mass General's cafeteria food and beverage options were classified as least, somewhat or most healthful with red, yellow or green labels, Green is healthiest. Researchers then tracked some 4,600 employees. About six months after the changes were made, the purchases of red label food decreased by more than 15%, and red beverages dropped by 39%. Green food and drink purchases increased, according to the study in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine. We sign our names to various documents all the time. Some signatures seal a legal contract. Others pledge us to an action. Now a study finds that when and where someone sign a document can influence the likelihood of them being honest or cheating. Scientists had people sign more than 13,000 auto insurance forms one group signed at the top of the form, the other at the bottom, and those who signed at the top admitted to nearly 2,500 more miles of usage than those who signed at the bottom, which translated into a $48 difference in annual premiums. According to the researchers, because the top signers put their names on the document before they were even tempted to fabricate information, they are less likely to act dishonestly. The study is in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Many people routinely deceive themselves to rationalize dishonest behavior. Ladybugs love to snack on aphids and other pests. So people began importing an Asian species called the Harlequin ladybird as natural pest control. But in their new environments, the Harlequins wiped out native ladybugs. And they have their parasites to thank. That's according to research in the journal Science. A parasite called Microsporidia lies dormant in the circulatory systems of Harlequin ladybirds. But when scientists injected Microsporidia into a common European ladybug species, the insects died within two weeks. When the ladybugs were injected with dead Microsporidia or a control substance most survived. Harlequin ladybirds' immune systems, on the other hand, have learned to deal with Microsporidia which lets the insects use them as biological weapons. Because one way ladybugs compete is by consuming the eggs and larvae of rival species.
Let's say you've saved up 200 grand for a trip to space with Virgin Galactic. Lucky you. But are you healthy enough to fly? You'll have to talk with your doctor. A new study in the BMJ outlines the role that general practitioners will have to play in commercial spaceflight. After all, astronauts typically have to be in tip-top shape. But opening the door to the paying public means that less healthy individuals will soon have access to space, too. And the stress of spaceflight, combined with the negative effects of weightlessness on muscle and bone, could cause real problems. It may be up to your personal physician to make the go, no-go call based on your medical history. Among the potential hypotheticals floated in the BMJ study, can my patient with stable angina and a pacemaker for complete heart block participate in a suborbital virgin galactic flight? Millions of roses get handed out on Valentine's Day. But growing roses has an environmental impact worse than many other crops. Start with climate change. Most roses in the U.S. and Europe are imported from warmer climes. All that flying and trucking adds thousands of metric tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Then there's all the water needed to, well, water the flowers and the runoff fouled by copious quantities of pesticides needed to make the roses look perfect. There's also the wildlife and workers poisoned by all that fumigation. Add to that habitat destruction where floral plantations displace native forest and wetlands. Finally, there's the refrigeration needed to keep those blooms fresh. The electricity is often produced by burning fossil fuels, and the refrigerant gases also exacerbate climate change. On election day, where do you vote? If it's in a church, you might be inclined to vote more conservatively than if you cast your ballot at a school or government building. That's according to research published in the International Journal for the Psychology of Religion. And the effect seems to hold. Whether you're Christian, Muslim or agnostic, progressive, independent or conservative. The study found that when random people were surveyed in front of a church, they gave more socially and politically conservative responses than people surveyed while standing in front of a government building. The shift in people's attitudes, the researchers suggest, was likely a result of visual priming meaning that people who could see the religious building were, consciously or not, getting cues that influenced their response. The surveys were conducted in Europe, so it's possible American voters might react differently. The objects such as comets may have helped start life on Earth by delivering water and carbon-based molecules to the young planet. Because putting something on ice doesn't necessarily keep it from changing, a new study finds that even in frigid, deep space environments, simple hydrocarbon molecules can react to become more complex ones. The process even works when temperatures drop to near absolute zero. But just what kind of organic molecules would exist on the icy bodies of a forming solar system? Researchers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, investigated how organic molecules might evolve toward greater complexity even in the cold of interstellar space. The scientists found that ultraviolet light, which radiates from stars and galaxies, 
can induce rapid changes in icy hydrocarbon molecules cooled to 5 Kelvin that's a frosty minus 451 degrees Fahrenheit. Kids from the ages of 2 to 19. Consume about 7 trillion calories in sugar-sweetened beverages per year. According to Steve Gortmaker of the Harvard School of Public Health. He spoke at the Obesity Society annual scientific meeting in San Antonio on September 23. 7 trillion is a lot of calories in sugar-sweetened beverages. At, for example, 50 cents per can. It's about $24 billion a year. All of those dollars and sugary calories are stoking the childhood obesity epidemic. Currently, in the U.S., about 17% of children and adolescents are obese that's more than 12.5 million kids. And new research in the British Medical Journal suggests that obese children will have much higher risk factors for cardiovascular disease as adults. Even as kids, their hearts are changing shape to look like those of adults at risk for heart disease. Are we smarter than the dinosaurs? Specifically, are we clever enough to avoid their fate? If we don't want to be blown away by an asteroid, it would help to know what's out there. That's the idea behind the Sentinel mission. Sentinel is an infrared space telescope designed to spot near-Earth asteroids. But it won't be near Earth. It will launch in 2017 or 18 and adopt a Venus-like orbit around the Sun. From there it will search space for any asteroids that might come dangerously close to Earth. It could double the known count of near-Earth asteroids in a matter of weeks. With enough warning. We'd have a chance to deflect an inbound asteroid. Sentinel is the brainchild of the B612 Foundation. B612 was the asteroid home of literature's Little Prince. The group announced their plans for Sentinel on June 28. But those plans depend on funding. Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant suffered three meltdowns last year. Paired with hydrogen explosions, these meltdowns allowed radioactive material to escape. So what's the effect on the environment and human health? The first clues come from what's called the pale grass blue butterfly. This delicate insect's wings change color and pattern in response to environmental changes. The offspring of female butterflies caught in the Fukushima region six months after the meltdowns sported such color pattern changes, as well as deformed legs, antennae, wings and even eyes. The deformities persisted and got worse in the second generation of offspring as well. The same deformities were found in butterflies collected from the wild. And the researchers induced similar effects by exposing normal butterflies to radiation from cesium particles like those that escaped Fukushima Daiichi. The research is in the journal Nature Scientific Reports. Is a kindergarten teacher might say. Sharing is caring. She might not mention that cooperation is also a great way to form a community. 
and thus improve everyone's chances of survival. Humans aren't the only ones to apply this strategy. Marine bacteria also form cooperative populations. According to a study in the journal Science, researchers examined the genomes of bacteria belonging to the Vibrionaceae family. In the lab, they grouped together bacteria with similar genetics that coexist in the same microhabitat. The scientists expected that within any given population, individuals capable of producing antibiotics would use these chemical weapons against others. But when they looked at interactions between different strains of Vibrionaceae, they found that only a few members of any given population could produce the bacteria killing substances and the rest of that community was resistant to those particular compounds. In lab tests, music and lighting can affect how much people eat. Now a study has found that changing the ambiance of a fast food restaurant to more of a fine dining atmosphere lessened the amount of food people crammed into their pie holes. To quote the paper, softening the lighting and music led people to eat less, to rate the food as more enjoyable, and to spend just as much. That last finding means that fast food joints, which are accused of contributing to the obesity epidemic, might actually try it. The study was led by well-known eating behaviorist Brian Wansink from Cornell University and appears in the journal Psychological Reports. The researchers converted part of a Hardee's so that it had soft lighting and slow jazz instrumentals. The patrons were expected to possibly eat more in the relaxed section, because they'd linger, maybe get dessert. But they actually averaged 18% fewer calories per meal than the folks in the rowdy section down from an average of 949 calories to 775. might picture Neanderthals as cavemen gnawing on bones around a campfire, which wouldn't be inaccurate. But Neanderthals may have also dined on roasted vegetables and known a bit about medicinal plants too. So says a study in the journal Naturwissenschaften, The Science of Nature. Researchers analyzed hardened dental plaque from five Neanderthals found in LSIDR cave, in northern Spain. Yes, 50,000-year-old dental plaque. And they found a lot lurking between the teeth like evidence of nuts, grasses and green veggies, chemical traces of wood smoke, and tiny, intact starch granules, proof Neanderthals ate their carbs. And in one individual, they detected compounds found in the medicinal herbs chamomile and yarrow. The herbs have no nutritional value, and since Neanderthals did have the gene to detect the herbs' bitter taste, the researchers speculate that the cave dwellers were munching on them not as food but to self-medicate. True to their name, boa constrictors squeeze the life out of their prey. But how does a boa know it snuffed out a rat? The snake listens for a heartbeat. When it stops, that's the cue to let go. According to a study in the journal Biology Letters, researchers outfitted rat cadavers with artificial beating hearts. They used dead rats to control for other signs of passing, like muscle spasms. Then they warmed up the rats, set the hearts pumping and dangled them in front of hungry boas. The snakes attacked. And as long as that rat heart kept thumping, the boas kept tightening their coils and applying bursts of pressure, sometimes for more than 20 minutes. But as soon as scientists killed the heartbeat, the boas loosened up. 
even captive-born boas who'd never hunted live prey paid attention to the pulse suggesting the behavior is innate and for good reason. Scientists are looking for Earth-like planets around other stars, but one way to limit the search can be to figure out where an Earth-like planet cannot exist and eliminate those types of systems. In a new study, astronomers turned their attention to so-called hot Jupiters. These are Jupiter-sized planets that have an orbit of only about three days. The scientists looked at 63 hot Jupiters to see if they could find evidence for any nearby Earth-like planets. They found none. But it could be that the companion planets are too small in size or mass or just aren't detectable with the current techniques. So the researchers then turned to hot Neptunes and warm Jupiters. These are Jupiters with slightly longer orbits. They found only two potential nearby planets among 222 hot Neptures. And of the 31 warm Jupiters, five showed evidence of a companion. Just like corporations, stars, too, can engage in mergers and acquisitions, a new study has identified a pair of white dwarf stars heading toward a merger. White dwarfs are the hot, superdense remnants of spent stars. In a binary system called J0651, two white dwarfs circle each other very rapidly. The binary pairing completes an orbit in less than 13 minutes and that already rapid orbital dance is speeding up as the two white dwarfs spiral in on each other. Each year their orbital period shrinks by 0.3 milliseconds. That's actually a pretty dramatic change on astronomical timescales. In about a million years, the white dwarfs will get so close that the larger one will start to cannibalize its smaller companion. Before long, the two stars will likely become one. The study appears in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. You just bought peanut butter. You chose the jar because, well, you've always eaten the crunchy variety. In reality, however, something else may have influenced your choice. The product you picked was centrally located on the store shelves. Researchers tracked eye movements of 67 subjects scanned a 3x3 matrix of fictitious brands. The tracking found that consumers tend to focus on the objects in the middle specifically, five seconds before they make their choice. And they do this for all kinds of products, from vitamins to online movies. Also, subjects continue to go for the centrally located brand even if the product was not in the middle of their specific visual field. So it's not in reference to one's view. It is literally about the product being central within the entire shelf layout. Roosters greet the rising sun with crowing sound, but they also crow at other times. So are they responding to the light? Or do they simply know that it's morning? New research says the latter. Roosters crow because of internal time cues. The finding is in the journal Current Biology. Scientists controlled the light levels in rooster habitats. For two weeks, the birds experienced 12 hours of light followed by 12 hours of dim light consistent with the pre-dawn noises observed in wild fowl. 
the roosters began to crow about two hours before their rooms lit up. Then, for two weeks, the roosters lived in constant dim light, yet they continued to crow about once a day at intervals of 23.7 hours to be precise. Even without morning light, their circadian rhythms told them when dawn should be breaking. In planet formation, as in adolescence, you've got your late bloomers, such as the case for a nearby star called T.W. Hydrae. At some 3 million to 10 million years of age, it's relatively old for a young star. That is, T.W. Hydrae formed much more recently than our Sun but is past the point at which most fledgling stars are still encircled by a massive disk of dust and gas the stuff of planet formation, but a new analysis shows that T.W. Hydrae retains a surprisingly hefty circumstellar disk, implying that the star could still be forming giant planets. The study appears in the journal Nature. Researchers from the US, Germany and the Netherlands pointed the European Space Agency's orbiting Herschel Space Observatory at T.W. Hydrae to investigate the star's disk. They detected a heavy hydrogen molecule called hydrogen deuteride. It's a given that most babies wear diapers, in Western cultures anyway. But diapers may trap more than waste they may also confine a baby's ability to walk. Scientists compared the walking gaits of 60 babies who were either naked, wore a thin disposable diaper or a thick cloth diaper. Half the babies were 13-month-old novice walkers and the other half 19-month-old experienced walkers. When the 30-13-month-olds walked naked only 10 fell but while wearing the cloth diaper 21 of them fell, and while wearing the disposable 17 of them fell. Among the 19-month-olds only 4 fell while naked or wearing disposables, while 8 fell when wearing cloth diapers. But both age groups took wider and shorter steps while wearing diapers as opposed to walking naked. The research is in the journal Developmental Science. The study cannot predict if wearing diapers has a long-term impact. I would have guessed a Wild West performer was practicing with a bullwhip while also vacuuming. But no. That sound is apparently produced by the Aurora Borealis. The Northern Lights. Since 2000 researchers at Finland's Aalto University have been collecting audio. As part of what's called the Auroral Acoustics Project. Folk tales have long held that the lights also produce odd sounds. But the claims were hard to prove. And some researchers thought that any noises produced by the energetic particles that caused the light show would be far too high in the sky to be heard on the ground. But the latest results indicate that at least some sounds are produced very close to the ground. A setup of three ground-based microphones allowed researchers to estimate that the sounds occur perhaps just 70 meters up. The results were just presented at the International Congress on Sound and Vibration in Vilnius, Lithuania. It's not easy being yellow, bananas now face two separate fungal epidemics, which threaten to pluck the fruit off of our tables. Fortunately, researchers have now sequenced banana DNA.
producing the genome of a banana variety that may hold the secret to defeating the diseases. The report is in the journal Nature. Today, half of all bananas, including the ones you probably buy, belong to the Cavendish variety, whose popularity stems in part from having no seeds. But this trait also removes sexual reproduction from the equation. The bananas are thus all genetically identical and identically vulnerable to the two fungal epidemics, Panama disease and black leaf streak disease. While the genome shows where this fruit fits in the history of plant evolution, it could also help researchers understand why D.H. Pahang, unlike its descendant, is resistant to the funguses behind both Panama and black leaf streak disease. The London Olympics are about to begin, and spectators will again be riveted by feats that would have been impossible when the modern Olympics began in 1896. Jaw-dropping records are attainable in part because of advances in materials science. New materials have led to equipment like super light and strong vaulting poles, and bathing suits that improve the flow of bodies in water. Such developments are detailed in a series of articles in the journal Nature Materials. The scientists say other advances are afoot that build sensors into athletes' clothing for, for instance, measuring performance in training, or protective gear that repairs itself when damaged. Elite athletes may tear cartilage or break bones, but cartilage doesn't have enough blood and cells to mend well, and sometimes bones just can't naturally bridge the break. Dogs are not just man's best friend. Previous studies have shown that kids with dogs are less likely to develop asthma. Now a new study may show how if results from mice apply to us. The work was presented at a meeting of the American Society for Microbiology. The study tests what's called the hygiene hypothesis. The idea is that extreme cleanliness may actually promote disease later on. Researchers collected dust from homes that had a dog. They fed that house dust to mice. They then infected the mice with a common childhood infection called respiratory syncytial virus or RSV. Mice who ate the dog dust were protected against RSV infection symptoms, like inflamed, mucus-coated airways, suggesting exposure helped them stave off the virus. Those mice also had more diverse communities of gut bacteria than control mice did. Every time you inhale, oxygen passes from your windpipe to your lungs and on into your bloodstream. But what if your windpipe was blocked? Getting the gas straight to your blood could save your life. Wait put down that syringe a large air bubble in a blood vessel can kill you. But what if the bubbles were only a few millionths of a meter in diameter? Researchers coated tiny amounts of oxygen gas with fatty molecules to create microparticles. Suspended in solution. The microparticles formed a foam containing 50 to 90 percent oxygen. In a beaker of blood, the foam was able to quickly transfer its oxygen to the cells. Then the researchers tested it in animals. Normally, a blocked windpipe cuts off the blood's supply of oxygen, leading to brain damage and death.
If you enjoy sharing all your likes and dislikes on Facebook, you're definitely not alone. Research finds that broadcasting personal opinions gives people the same sense of reward as earning money. The study is in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Study subjects had their brains scanned while they either talked about their opinions or judged the beliefs of another. And sharing their own point of view stimulated more activity in the reward processing parts of the subjects' brains. In another experiment, participants got to choose among reporting their own opinion, judging someone else's opinion or answering a true or false question, rather than maximize their winnings by answering the questions that were worth the most cash. People preferred to talk about themselves even though they sacrificed an average of 17% of their potential earnings to do it. Does an ice-cold drink actually taste better than the same beverage at room temperature? Depends on what its taste is. A new study finds that the intensity of some flavors varies with temperature. The work is in the journal Chemosensory Perception. Researchers took solutions that tasted bitter, sour, sweet, or astringent a flavor found in legumes and raw produce that creates a dry, puckering feel in the mouth. They either chilled the solutions to 5 degrees Celsius, the recommended temperature for keeping food cool, or heated the solutions to 35 degrees Celsius, a couple degrees below human body temperature. Volunteers then rated the tastes. Both sour and astringent solutions tasted stronger at warm temperatures, and the intensity lasted longer than it did with chilled drinks. Bitter flavors came through best when chilled. and eyes are the windows to the soul. As such, they can reveal if someone is lying, right? Cop shows, advice shows, even some organizational training courses hold that if somebody looks up and to the right, they're probably lying. Up and to the left means they're telling the truth. Now a study says that there is no connection between eye movement and lying. The work is in the journal Public Library of Science 1. Researchers tested eye movement and honesty in multiple ways. For example, they tracked the eye movements of subjects who were lying or telling the truth about things they had recently done. There was no correlation between lying and eye direction. The researchers also closely analyzed 52 archived news videos of real people, making a public plea for the safe return of a missing relative. Our Milky Way galaxy has two large satellite galaxies orbiting it. They're known as the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds, and humans have been aware of the existence of these celestial objects for at least a millennium. Recently, researchers were curious about whether our configuration is fairly typical, or an astronomical anomaly. In other words, is our corner of the cosmos ordinary? Now a new study finds that the Milky Way and its companion galaxies are an unusual combination, but they're not one of a kind. Astronomers in the UK and Australia looked at thousands of galaxies to try to find an analog of our arrangement. The search turned up two close replicas, each with a Milky Way-like galaxy accompanied by two galaxies comparable to the Magellanic Clouds. But the researchers also concluded that such arrangements are pretty rare.
One day the banana is perfect. Bright yellow. Firm. Flavorful. But even within that same day brown spots appear on your perfectly ripe banana. Its flesh turns mushy. And it's destined for the compost or at best. Banana bread. But scientists are developing a way to extend the life of ripe bananas. It's a spray on coating made from chitosan a substance found in crab and shrimp shells. The new gel can be sprayed on bananas to slow the ripening process by up to 12 days. Like other fruit bananas remain alive after being picked and they actually continue to respire. This means they take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. The more the banana breathes the faster it ripens and then rots. Bananas ripen more quickly than most fruit because they don't naturally slow the respiration after being picked. In fact it speeds up, causing bananas to become mushy. Ronald Cotton went to prison for rape. The victim picked him from a lineup convinced she was accurate. She picked him again years later when his case was reopened. This second lineup included the actual rapist. After 11 years behind bars, Cotton was later exonerated by DNA evidence. Experts say that the current lineup format pressures witnesses to identify a suspect, even when they lack confidence. So researchers are trying to improve the accuracy of such identifications. One recent study had more than 900 participants watch a short film of a staged crime. Up to a week after watching the film, the viewers looked at photos of suspects one at a time, and rated how confident they were about each one's guilt. Half of the participants could take as long as they wanted to look at the photos. The other half had to decide within a few seconds. Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.